Oh man. Oh man is right. As we're back wait, wait, for the you know, BTS from a you know, very emotional ending. These were, there were just some hicks and then there's... <laughs> and then there was death. Yeah, and they didn't mean any harm. And now... They're all you dead. You don't know that. You don't know that they didn't mean any harm. <laughs> also... You do, this is yeah, kind of DM revealed is, that they were not adventurers. They were actually just merchants. They could have been, you know, bad merchants. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. They're not bad merchants. You're a bad adventurer. <laughs> <laughs> it might be true. Leave no, them no, no, alone. No, no. <laughs> They're all dead. We'll never know. <laughs> I can't help but feel like <sighs> that's the first thing that you're gonna do the moment that you get back up is just find like Jacob and stop beating the Can shit I get, out of like, him. She doesn't know this advantage is my fault. on choking him out. <laughs> There's no yeah. idea this is my fault. That's the thing. None of us know that the fire animal was there. <laughs> shit, you're right. Oh my god. Oh damn it. <laughs> but he knows, and I hope it eats him up. Oh, but that's so. <laughs> Oh fuck! That's that's even better as far as story stuff goes. So, really. this really shows how bad exhaustion can be into a surprise encounter of strong combatants with pack tactics stuck on a highway, and literally between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. Sure. Yep. <laughs> We literally, I slipped down. I couldn't climb. <laughs> I'm still so upset that I specifically moved to not die. <laughs> I'm so upset. I became very concerned whenever rolls started cascading that we're just even trying to reach out to Biddy because I've seen this happen so poorly before. And things tend to snowball. Whatever dice karma that you want to believe in, things seem to just start trending, and they were trending poorly. Just trying to get to you to assess the situation, let alone characters that don't have the tools for a resurrection of what they needed and finding out, and you guys finding out with the audience at the same time. Holy shit, the shock and awe of like how grim this situation's got. And then to add that, we become very close to the same situation in a death circle down below between me and Toph. Now, luckily there was still a second person behind. So me standing behind Toph, there was still something else to go kill and it didn't go all in on Toph and then perma that character as well. Because then we're uh, sitting there with two. I seem to recall a distracting zombie as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and damn glad you did because it ate a full crit on top of it. The meat yeah. shield was very important. You're welcome. <laughs> Xanarin, um, for you. For a person that can deal and a character that can deal out massive damage the handicap of both movement and not being able to get your sneak attack gives you these kind of fading moments of hopelessness of what can i do and there's so much going on around you mm. what did it f how did that feel to not have access to what are your bread and butter tools there's i think to a certain degree, there was an appropriate amount of disempowerment, you know, the sort of like uh, the don't let this be in vain kind of throwing of knives at the gnolls that have literally just murdered Biddy is one of those moments of like, okay, this is, this is a moment of letting anything to do with any kind of smart tactic get away. Like there's a cruel streak, I think, in everyone that comes out with a degree of desperation. And that's kind of, I think, what uh, I sat there and I sort of had to tap for that particular moment. Because it's one of these points at which, uh, by all sort of attempts, you know, 
it, it was the it was the moment where Billy and Sam very much attempted to play safe, and it was just like, I I know that I'm very much underpowered in that particular instance, and you know the thing that irritated me a little bit with the movement was if I'd had thirty feet, I might have chosen to jump over there and actually land, because I would have been able to fly up there and actually make it. Um, at least provide another target, you know, I've got things like Uncanny Dodge, so I could have halved some big damage on one of those attacks. High Dex and decent AC, maybe I would have been able to dodge a few entirely. But uh, nowhere close, and yeah, that's the debilitating thing, and that's kind of the end result of it all, is just throw what you can uh, and hope that Karma carries at least a few dice. Like, carried one, but not enough, and Ah, wow. <laughs> yeah, no. Debilitating. But I think in a very story-appropriate way of kind of like a very desperate gambit. Read. Mud. We've played a ton. And we've always enjoyed pushing the button. <laughs> and no matter what happens or could have happened from this encounter... It will not stop us from pushing the button and telling whatever story. But at what moment during our, I won't say downward trend, when it became a quick spiral, did you start plotting in your mind that you would go as far as on episode five saying, I will give you whatever you want. That is a big thing that doesn't come out of your character's mouths and I didn't expect it this early on maybe because we have done Meorian core uh, with man with the diamond eyes there is more history than just five episodes but for you that's a big thing for your characters generally that you play for somebody that well we've done work together we're essentially you know we're a team but that's a big that's a big thing from you. I want to know what was going through your mind. Uh, well, I mean, I started to it was trending downwards. I mean, I cast the fireball because she was outnumbered over there, four to four to one, and it was you know there's four people down low, but nobody else is gonna be able to get to her. So, um, I thought you know could at least take out a couple, and then like even the odds a bit up there, but. Uh, yeah, that, that did not go uh, the way I thought it would after they uh, still were alive because they um, only took half damage, right? The one took half damage or whatever. So um, unfortunately, that uh, that fireball didn't do as much as I wanted it to. Um, but in terms of the, uh, <clears throat> you know, Jacob, uh, I think, realizes that this is in some way his fault. Not that he could have known there was an entire forest full of gnolls. But, you know, the situation and uh, he was try actively trying to avoid the fight. I was trying to actively avoid a fight by sneaking out and trying to be smart about it. Um, yeah, but like, you know, even though they haven't been together that long, I think, you, you know, this is he feels it is his responsibility. Um, and so, you know, he was uh, in some ways like he's already uh, it, I guess feels like he's already taken the worst that his uh, that his uh, patron can can offer, you know. Or in some ways, like you know, his face is already messed up. His his whole life is already like burned. So uh, you know, like what's one more? Um, especially you know if it's something that he's responsible for. So I think that's that's what he's thinking. Becca. For the first time, you evoked the necrotic symbols of your connection between wearing your own mother as your armor and weapons. Mm -hmm. Was it the intensity of the situation that brought that out of Toph? Or is there something that we still don't know about Toph's ability and that interesting cultural connection that your character has that is very foreign to the rest of the party sure so 
this is much more of an opportunity for Toph to also understand. This is being raised in the woods alone with his mother and not really having that opportunity to kind of see and learn from others or know what is normal or what he is even capable of. This was certainly a demonstration of just pure survival instinct and trying to get through. Glam. An excellent use of RP that doesn't have any mechanics with inside the game that's going off of this is what a kinku does. What a perfect opportunity to add some much, much needed Bayesian from the rest of them to lock down and separate another one of these gnolls from being able to attack again and channeling your innate ability to mimic. Didn't make it easy, so we're still gonna have to roll. Gave you something to roll, we came it up on the fly and then we could see the power of nat 20s. Oh my God. That was so cool. I've been thinking about it ever since we heard the music boxes. I was like, I can oh. sing that like the entire time, like last episode and this episode. I was just like, once you started up the music box song, I was like, yes, I'm totally going to mimic this. It's going to work. I swear. Um, but yeah, uh, I was very excited to be able to do that. Um, I love looking at the traits of the character. Uh, Nelson is relatively simple in a lot of his motivations you know he he doesn't see necromancy the way that a lot of people see necromancy he sees it the same way that you know you would see a healer or a paladin and it's really coming body. through now how you play your necromancer is so different than you will yeah. see 90 percent of the necromancers played and i i love that it's a very natural process and yeah. as your as your dm i'm excited to see the ways that you do it because it's not the way someone usually metagames a necromancer and plays it like a video game one yours is very natural and i love it and it makes yeah. for such good story well thank you i'm that makes me really excited i um i i love that about nelson and you know and then him just being who he is is a part of that right he's you know uh looking into the traits of kenku i i would be foolish not to use them i mean they're the bonuses in my stats and things like that so uh any opportunity that i can let Nelson be Nelson, especially in the heat of battle, um, is something that I love doing and will probably seek to do definitely again in the future. <laughs> and Biddy, I really thought when you were given those two cards earlier, this prophetic strength before death and then the divine intervention, I was for sure, I was like, this is this is some sort of, this is a moment up on top of the hill, but those don't always work out the way that we want, but it gave your character a chance and you stood like a badass on top of the mountain and did what you could. But I have to know what's running through your mind, someone who survived death once now what ran through your mind when you thought how, if I get the chance for another resurrection ceremony, just how difficult is it gonna be? What were the thoughts through your head? I mean, I honestly thought that that was it. I was like, there's no way that I'm gonna come back again. <laughs> Even though I actively tried to avoid it. Um, it got me and I got, I was upset. I was actually really genuinely upset just because Biddy's a fighter, you know, it's her class, but in herself, she's a fighter and she couldn't save herself again. And it's kind of a knock to her, her strength and her belief in herself. Um, so that, that, Messed me up a little bit. And I don't, I, I, I have a feeling it's going to change her. Because, you know, that's twice now. And she realizes that. So. Helm's your boyfriend. 
Yeah, honestly though, you it, was that a proposal? <laughs> <laughs> like, she accepts. <laughs> Take care of me, man, please. <laughs> if Mud can throw nat 20s on command, I do a fairly good job on the D100. I'm not gonna talk any yeah. shit because it can go south at any point in time, but I'm two for two on this campaign yeah. now. It's true. It's pretty good. <laughs> and we needed it. We needed our little come come to hell moment. And it's <laughs> it's gonna buy us some energy and get us unexhausted. And we're gonna have to come down that mountain and finish this thing off. It feels like every game you manage to pull out this wild epic moment and like the music is surging and people are dying and you know and it's like oh my god i don't know i don't know man that's great. That was it, great it makes for a hell of a story doesn't it mm. that's why throw the dice let your players tell a hell of a story you end up with moments like these that galvanize the party and really pull them together because this is a sad moment seeing a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of things that are massacred and really only a divine intervention. I have them do a lot, but there's a lot of death <laughs> and a lot of carnage there. I don't even know what I'm going to do going into next week. I'm gonna have to really think about what Helmwood He's a protector, or they're a protector. But how far does that protection go, and what does that look like for merchants that were carrying this knoll in the first place? We'll mm -hmm. see. Maybe we won't find out until we climb down that mountain, but you can see us next week. 5 p.m. CST, 6 p.m. EST. Over on CaptainRobert.com or no, twitch.tv slash Captain Robert and twitch.tv slash Rare Drop Roleplay. We'll see you guys then. <laughs> <laughs>